Hello Spartan fans and welcome to the Spartan Sports Zone here on NSUSpartans.com fueled by Gatorade. What an exciting week of action for NSU. First we'll head to the gridiron as Norfolk State was looking for its third straight victory. We will also head to the court and check in with the busy Spartan volleyball team as they dived into the heart of conference play with two big contests last weekend. The men's tennis team was in action in Winston-Salem, North Carolina and we'll also debut our new segment, Know Your Fellow Spartan, to see just how familiar our student athletes are with each other. So much news to get to on this edition of the Spartan Sports Zone, and it starts right now. Hello Spartan fans and welcome to the Spartan Sports Zone. I'm Ross Gordon, the play-by-play -play voice for the Spartans, joined by Mike Bello, the Assistant Sports Information Director, and also Sports Information Assistant Chandra Lee. It was a busy week for all of the teams in season, and we start this edition of the Spartan Sports Zone in Dover, Delaware. Alumni Stadium has been the site of some very difficult games for the Spartans over the years, but NSU came into the weekend looking to make it a three-game winning streak, this time versus the Delaware State Hornets. Not a lot of action in the first quarter for either team as defense was the story early on. An interception by Colin Frazier was the only real action of the quarter, which was highlighted by a combined five punts. In the second quarter, after a long drive for the Spartans, Tyler Clark was intercepted by Ronald Robinson at the Delaware State 33-yard line. Still struggling in the first half, Delaware State University quarterback Corey Murphy got his pass tipped by Darren Merrill and picked off by linebacker Brent Singleton, who returned the ball 17 yards to the Delaware State 32-yard line. That set up the only score of the day for the Spartans, as Deuce Finch ran for 19 yards in three consecutive plays, which set up the lone score for the green and gold. On a third down and seven, Clark hooked up with Derek Dimps on the corner route to put the Spartans up six with three minutes and six seconds left in the first half. After a three and out by the Hornet offense, the Spartans again were moving in Hornet territory. After back-to-back -back passes to Finch got the Spartans a first down, Delaware State again struck on the defensive side of the ball. Clark was intercepted for the second time in the quarter, this one by Joe Boyd, whose touchdown return was negated by a Delaware State penalty. The final play of the half was a Hail Mary attempt by Murphy, who was picked off again by Darren Merrill for Murphy's third INT of the half. Turnovers really hurt the Spartans on the day as the second half started with a promising drive before Jerron Stokes was stripped of the football and the Hornets recovered. Seven plays and 56 yards later, Najee Jackson got Delaware State on the board with a seven-yard TD run to help tie the game at seven. Nico Flores came in the third quarter for NSU and looked sharp on his first pass of the day, connecting with Joe Hawkins for seven yards. But the NSU could not keep the drive going as the DSU defense stepped up in a major way, stopping Flores on a fourth and one quarterback sneak. That will take us to the fourth quarter. After a three and out for NSU, Delaware State put together an amazing drive to win the ball game. An 18 play, 61 yard drive had three third down conversions, including a third and 12 and a third and 17. The drive also featured two fourth down conversions as well to set up the game winning quarterback sneak from a half yard out to, from Murphy to provide the final margin of victory for the Hornets. NSU got the ball back twice after that, but the first of two drives was doomed by a bad snap and the final drive by an unfortunate interception thrown by Flores. Flores ended the day 5 for 8 for 61 yards and one interception, and Clark finished 13 of 22 with two INTs and one touchdown. Finch led the team in rushing again for NSU with 46 yards. Chung led the Hornets in rushing with 66 yards on 11 carries, while the NSU defense held the number two passing offense to just 114 yards with three interceptions. The four turnovers were the story of the day for the Spartans. Coach Adrian knows that the offense will have to work on correcting those mistakes, with Hampton coming in for the Battle of the Bay. Well, yeah, anytime you, you turn the ball over a few times, it's going to cost you a ball game. You know, if you threw three interceptions, had two fumbles, you got to hold on to the ball and make sure we throw it at the right places. So, yeah, obviously we're going to work on that, and hopefully we'll get five days of practice in and, and get better at that. 
Later on in the show, we'll preview the next matchup for the Spartans as NSU hosts Hampton in the Battle of the Bay this Saturday at Dick Price Stadium. Now for a look at the previous week for the Spartan volleyball team, here's Mike Bello. Thanks, Ross. After a 3-0 loss to VCU on Tuesday of last week, NSU was looking to bounce back in a pair of conference matches on Friday and Sunday. The Spartans traveled up to the nation's capital to take on Howard on Friday, but NSU did not get off to a good start. After Howard won the first set, the match turned into a marathon as NSU won the second set in extra points, 31-29. The Bison came back to win the third set, also in extra points, 30-28, before taking the fourth set in the win in a match that lasted longer than two hours. It was back home on Sunday for NSU against a scrappy Delaware State squad. The, Spartans, the Hornets gave the Spartans fits throughout the match, but in the end, NSU came away with a 3-0 victory. NSU won the first two sets by identical 25-22 scores before coming away with a 25-18 victory in the third set. The Spartans improved the 7-13 overall and 3-2 in the MEAC, taking over third place in the Northern Division thanks to the play of their two seniors, Gota Yanko Skeda and Korolai Jarema. Jarema had 12 kills and hit 462 against Howard and followed that up with a career-high 15 kills on a 440 attack percentage against Delaware State. Yanko Skeda led an issue in both matches with 14 kills against the Bison and 16 kills with a 361 attack percentage against the Hornets. Head coach Brandon Duvall was pleased with how his seniors stepped up to play big when the team needed them the most. Uh, both of our seniors stepping up is, is a tremendous value to you because that's exactly what we needed out of our senior leadership. Um, both Goda and Coralie have come a long way since they've come on a campus and um, they're starting to become the leaders on the floor, that, which is what we've been missing since we've lost Charlotte and, and Nicole from last season. And uh, now they've become our go-to players. Uh, the girls you can see are getting more comfortable around them and now you see other people stepping up. Later in the show, we'll find out what the Spartan offense needs to do to continue its recent improvement, heading into another key MEAC weekend. Now let's turn it over to Chandra Lee to see how men's tennis did at Wake Forest. Thanks, Mike. The men's tennis team competed in the Wake Forest Invitational this past weekend. Sophomore Samuel Lindberger posted a fifth place finish in singles competition to cap off a successful weekend for the Spartans. Lindberger won his opening match against Elon's Dan Sabik before falling to East Carolina's Jared Morris. Limberger also posted a win against Liberty's Gilliam Sacano. The Spartans did well in doubles play where they claimed a pair of bracket titles. Sophomore Dmitry Zemantovich and junior Peter Romstromer Pello teamed up to take second place in Flight B. The duo won a trio of matches with wins over Furman, South Carolina State, and UNCG. Limberger and junior Daniel Grau claimed the second place victory in Flight D. They posted wins against Liberty and Davidson. Both the men's and the women's tennis teams will close out their fall schedules at the ITA Regionals October 17th through the 22nd. The men will compete in Blacksburg, Virginia, while the women will compete in Charlottesville, Virginia. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from coaches and players from both Hampton and Norfolk State about the upcoming Battle of the Bay. We'll also put volleyball captains Noel Eagles and Kylie Thim through the ringer with our new segment, Know Your Fellow Spartan, to see who knows who better. All that plus more coming up on the Spartan Sports Zone. Secure your future by getting a top-notch education only at Norfolk State University. With world-class faculty and facilities, a bustling campus life, and highly regarded programs in the College of Science, Engineering, and Technology in the School of Business, Norfolk State is one of Virginia's leaders in higher education. Founded in 1935 as a beacon of hope to the region's youth, more than 78 years later, the university remains a source of inspiration for those in the Hampton Roads region and beyond who aspire to fulfill their dreams. A military-friendly school in one of the largest military areas of the world, Norfolk State University is home to faculty researchers who have forged partnerships that have created cutting-edge virtual learning environments. With more than 30,000 alumni, Norfolk State has played a vital role in our community in the past and is serving in a critical role today and will continue to be an academic leader in the future. Find out more at nsu.edu. Norfolk State University, infinite possibilities. Welcome back to the Spartan Sports Zone. Student athletes spend countless hours together both on and off the field of play, from intense preseason practices to long bus rides to eating in the calf and everything in between. So we here on the Spartan Sports Zone decided to match up two student athletes from the same programs each week to see how well they really know each other. So for the first time ever, we bring to you our newest segment, Know Your Fellow Spartan. Well, welcome back to NSUSpartans.com, fueled by Gatorade. We're starting a new segment this week, and we're going to do it every week. We're going, to see, we're going to test our student athletes, and we're going to see how well they know each other, know their best friends, know their teammates. So this week we, started, we decided to start off with a couple of volleyball players. We've got Kylie Thim here on the one side, we've got Noel Eagles on the other side. 
Now they've been here, this is their fourth year in the program, both of them. So they should know each other real well. So now we're going to put them to the test. We've asked them eight questions. So they wrote down their answers on these pieces of paper. So they're going to guess each other's, what they thought each other wrote down, what they thought their favorite, whatever it was, wherever we asked the questions. And they're going to hold them up and see if we got them right. So if we'll start off with Noelle. Now Noelle, the first question, what do you think Kylie's favorite color is? Um, her favorite color is green. Okay, Kylie, hold up your paper. Let's see if you're right. Bam! Yeah. Oh, we are one for one. One for one for Noah. Now that's easy. That is They're wearing easy. green. We're green and gold here at NSU. So that's a freebie. That's an easy one. Okay. So now we're going to start with you, Kylie. What do you think Noelle wrote down as her favorite color? Hmm. I'm going to shoot. <laughs> Purple. Purple? Yeah. All right. What did you write down? Purple. All right. So they're both one for one. Okay. Second question. We'll start. We'll go back this way. All right. What do you think Noelle's favorite movie is? This one took me a while to try to remember because for some reason it was not clicking in my head. But uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is Avatar. Avatar? Yeah. That's your final answer? Final answer. Okay. Reveal it. Avatar. Avatar it is. Okay. Two for two, and now Noelle is one for one. See if she can make it two for two and keep up. Going down. <laughs> All right, Noelle. What is Kylie's favorite movie? <laughs> Lion King. The Lion King. That's a classic. Really? You cool. must have been about if five when lie, that came out. I'm gonna go. Did you lie? <laughs> what did you? What did you? What's your answer? Okay, we can reveal it. Lion King. <laughs> oh, okay. They're good. Now, how old were you when that movie came out? You must have been like five. I think I was like a month old. <laughs> I was in seventh grade. That's really bad. Oh, man. Now, and I just dated myself. Okay, I'm done with this. All right. To watch the full Know Your Fellow Spartan, check back at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NSU Athletics. It's that time of year again for the State Farm Battle of the Bay this week as the football team will host Hampton this Saturday at Dick Price Stadium. And as is customary every year, players and coaches from both teams gathered during the week to meet with the media and discuss what is one of the most heated robberies in the MIAC. The Spartan Sports Zone was at the Student Center on Wednesday to catch the sights and sounds of this year's Battle of the Bay presser. We know why we're here today. We always look forward to this great event, either here on the campus of Norfolk State or at Hampton University. And for me, it's always a pleasure to be a part of such an event because being a former student athlete and having to compete against Hampton all those years and we're still competing, it's always fun. But we look forward to this, this great football game. Battle of the Bay, it's, it's one of the things I really like. And I think it's one of the few things that are still left in FCS football is tradition. You know, the big guys are losing all the traditions. You don't have Texas and Texas A&M playing anymore. You don't have West Virginia and Pitt playing anymore, which really bothers me seeing how I played at West Virginia. You don't have those big signature games because it's all about money. This is about a game. This is about two people that are 18 miles apart that go to high school together. I know, I know uh, the nine years I've been here, I go to our basketball games or any functions over there. I see a lot of guys from Hampton over there having fun on this campus. So that's all part of it. You know? And uh, getting ready for this game, a tough team in Norfolk State University. Their defense, we're definitely getting ready for them. They've been in the top 10, top five, if I'm not mistaken, over the last three or four years and have done an outstanding job of playing defense. Offensively, they got some great weapons. We know that we need to focus up a little bit more in practice and in meetings and stuff, but we're not really too down about it. We just know that we, if we keep winning, we just have to win out and or we control our own destiny. That's the good thing about it. Well, you know, previous before, you know, when I was in high school, everything that I knew about um, MEAC football was always, you know, the family and with them cooking a rivalry. Now that, you know, coming to Norfolk State, you know, knowing that, you know, Norfolk and Hampton sound similar to the Bethune and family rivalry. And it just it brings a whole other level of passion to this game. You know, you've been here for five years, you know, seeing the, the battles, you know, the, the good, tough games, you know, it's just, it means so much that, you know, it goes beyond football a little bit, you know, it goes from one HBCU to another HBCU, 15 minutes and you know, driving distance. So it just means a lot to, you know, community and fans. The Pirates enter the game 1-5 after defeating North Carolina a and in HU's homecoming last Saturday, 31-26. The Pirates own a 1-1 record in conference play after falling to South Carolina State the week before. Norfolk State carries a 2-4 record, including a 2-1 mark in conference play after falling to Delaware State last weekend. 
The Battle of the Bay gets underway at 1 p.m. on Saturday. You can listen to the game live beginning with the pregame show at 12.30 p.m. on WXTG 1490 AM, the game, as well as Hot 91.1 FM. You can also follow the live stats and watch the live video stream at NSUSmartens.com. The cost of the video feed is just $8. NSU Volleyball will be back on the court this weekend as the Spartans host UMES on Friday before heading across the water to take on Hampton on Sunday. Friday will be a rematch of a contest played earlier this year in Echoes as NSU will host UMES for the second time this year. After winning the MEAC title last year, the Hawks have backslid following a loss of their head coach and nearly everyone from that championship squad. UMES sits at 2-15 overall with wins over Bethune-Cookman and Delaware State and a 1-4 conference record. The match will begin at 7 p.m. at Joseph Eccles Hall. Free live stats will be available as well as a live video feed for $5 at NSUSpartans.com. Then on Sunday, NSU will begin the second half of the MEAC season at Hampton. The Pirates defeated NSU earlier this year 3-1 and own the top spot in the MEAC at 5-0. So far this year, Norfolk State is the only MEAC team to take a set from Hampton in conference play. Vendula Strakova continues to lead the Pirate offense with 5.72 kills per set. The match against Hampton begins at 3 p.m. at HU's Holland Hall on Sunday. For Coach Duvall, the key this weekend will be for the Spartans to continue their recent improvement in both their blocking and their offensive attack. Uh, I think we just got to keep grinding in practice. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot accomplished right now in our, in our practices and, and doing everything we can to prepare for each opponent. You know, we, we do every, what everyone else is doing. We're studying the game film. We're trying to find out an opponent tendencies. But the biggest thing we've been concentrating on most is what we're doing on our side of the net. Uh, cleaning up our blocking, uh, you know, being able to move more efficiently through balls and, and um, just being more aggressive in all aspects of the game. And you can start seeing uh, how, and as individuals, they're stepping up and then we're becoming a better team because of it. The contest against Hampton will mark a stretch in which NSU will play six of the final seven regular season matches on the road. After having off last week, both the men's and the women's cross-country teams will be back in action this weekend. The women will travel to Newport News, Virginia on Saturday to compete in the Christopher Newport Invitational. The 6K race will be held at Lee Mansion Hall and is scheduled to begin at 11 a.m. The men will compete at the NCAA Pre-National Meet on Saturday. The 8K race is hosted by Indiana State University and is set to start at 11 a.m. The NSU bowling team will kick off its season this weekend, competing at the Cutstown Fall Baker Invitational on Saturday. The Spartans returned seven players from last year's team that made its first ever appearance at a national championship event. Headlining those players is, of course, senior Thea Aspiris. A three-time All-MEAC first-team honoree, Aspiris is the only senior on a team that also includes six juniors. Kelsey Yarborough, Delilah Bethel, and Carrie Hickey are expected to contribute throughout the year, as is freshman Nicole Rivera-Santiago, the only newcomer on the team. Junior Courtney Brown is also expected to do more this year as NSU's number six in the lineup, with Ashley Buck and Courtney Williford backing up Brown as well. With an experienced but not very deep lineup, the key for head coach Wilhelmina Harrison is for her top players to bowl on a consistent level this year. We lost two bowlers, um, Sheila Smith and Jessica Overton, that really, they were starters, but they weren't starters every game uh, in every match. So. Uh, we were talking and, and I was talking to the girls and I was telling them, I said, you know, we still have five starters that came back this year and I expect them to bowl that way. It's now time for this week's top three performances. Coming in at number three is senior linebacker Brent Singleton. He finished with 11 tackles, including a half a tackle for loss and a key interception in the second quarter that set up NSU's only score of the day. Our number two performer is sophomore tennis player Samuel Limberger. He finished fifth in singles play at the Wake Forest Invitational and teamed up with Daniel Growl to take second in his doubles flight. And our top performer this week is senior hitter Corla Jarema. She finished with 27 kills and hit an unheard of 451 to go along with five blocks in NSU's two matches over the weekend against Howard and Delaware State. And that will once again do it for this week's edition of the Spartan Sports Zone. As always, we would like to thank the Department of Video and Media Productions and Chantel Coates for all of their help. I'm Shandrea Lee. I'm Mike Bello. And I'm Ross Gordon. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.